us, Father, we would like to come before you. We would like to begin doing our Vespers and our prayer meeting. We would like to ask that throughout this time that you please help us to have an attentive mind and to be able to focus on the things that you would like to teach us. And we would like to thank you for this week so far and thank you for bringing us here safely. We're, we ask that you just bless us in accordance with your will. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you at the end of this day to thank you for uh, the fact that you have brought us safely here, that uh, no problems we encountered during our work. We thank you for the privilege um, to live in these momentous times. Uh, thank you for these moments of uh, prayer and fellowship. We ask that uh, the presence of your Holy Spirit may be with us, may guide each mind, may God Brother Parminder, as he leads out, may um, you drive out Satan and his angels and every distraction from our minds, and maybe we be focused to gain a richer experience in you. Thank you for everything, in Jesus' name, Amen. In early writings, page 241, the Advent Movement Illustrated, you should have notes for this. There may not be notes there any longer, I'm afraid. But we're just reading straight out of the chapter. Begins page 240, Advent Movement Illustrated. We've been looking at this for a number of weeks. So I just want to read the first three sentences of the first paragraph. Saw a number of companies that seemed to be bound together by cords. Many in these companies were in total darkness. Their eyes were directed downward to the earth and there seemed to be no connection between them and Jesus. But scattered through these different companies were persons whose countenances looked light and whose eyes were raised to heaven. Um, I'll just read a bit further. That's, I want us just to come back and comment on those three. Beams of light from Jesus, like rays from the sun, were imparted to them. An angel bade me look carefully, and I saw an angel watching over every one of those who had a ray of light, while evil angels surrounded those who were in darkness. I heard the voice of an angel cry, Fear God, give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. As we've gone through our prayer meetings, and um, hopefully I haven't directed us too much, but we've all come to a common understanding of what um, these paragraphs are saying. It seemed to me that we'd all come to a consensus on those first three sentences. But I've had some feedback um, from a brother, and he's... I don't, I don't want to make it sound too strong, but he's objecting to the conclusion that uh, I, we came for the first three sentences. So I just want you to read the three sentences carefully. <coughs> paragraph two. one. Oh, 240, paragraph one. <coughs> first three sentences. And then read the next two. Basically, it'll take you to the end of the paragraph. So I think there are five sentences here, if I've counted correctly. <coughs> so uh, while I'm just waiting for people to finish up, I'll just read it out aloud again for the camera. I saw a number of companies that seemed to be bound together by cords. 
Many of these companies were in total darkness, their eyes were directed downward to the earth. There seemed to be no connection between them and Jesus. But scattered through these different companies were persons whose countenances looked light and whose eyes were raised to heaven. Beams of light from Jesus, like rays from the sun, were imparted to them. An angel bade me look carefully, and I saw an angel watching over every one of those who had a ray of light, while evil angels surrounded those who were in darkness. I heard the voice of an angel cry, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. Now, interestingly, um, this brother who's objecting to this, I went through this study in the group setting, and he was there 18 months ago, and he didn't object then. He's watching the prayer meetings now. He may not even remember that we went through the study, and he's listened to the things, and he's um, disagreeing with the conclusion. So I want, to, I want you to tell me what, what this first paragraph is saying. <coughs> How, how we read. Most of us have already been to prayer meeting, so you know what my thoughts are. Was he objecting to you want us to figure out what he might be objecting yeah, to? Yeah, so I, ju I just want, I, I want us to <coughs> just to refresh our minds or reread and say, how would you understand this first paragraph without me saying, remember we did this? Yeah. Sorry. Well, I, I don't know what he's objecting to, but the only thing that I could see that somebody might read differently is that the number of companies that were bound together by cords doesn't mean all the companies were bound together by one cord. It could be different companies and each one's bound together by cords, but that's the only thing I could do differently than what we had said originally. Okay. Agreed. Or that maybe the companies aren't just denominations, maybe they're family units or Oh, he's not, he's not worried about any of those companies. It wasn't that point, but okay, so that's that would be something I think people could object to. Yeah, though. that's the only thing I can yeah. think about. What the companies would be, but I would argue that we can define the companies as being churches, because mm -hmm. when you read down further on, remember what they said they were leaders or ministers mm -hmm. right. of mm -hmm. the various companies. So I think you can... So <coughs> each company could be bound together by cords. So each company is bound in it together, yeah. or each yeah. pe a number of people in each company is bound together, but maybe the whole com all the companies are not bound together. Yeah. We could argue, get, uh, argue that, about that's that. That's the only thing that I can see. But <coughs> so we can say there's like small companies and they're, that are bound together, we could say, and all of them are bound together like by a big cord or what? I mean, I don't yeah, know. That wasn't yeah, that was the point. That, that's the imagery that we had. Yeah. Um, so there's something else that he has Where did we begin this passage? <coughs> well, we had it at, with the proclamation of the first angel. So that would be another place where he's placing... Because uh, I can't remember exactly where we placed it because we had different... So how would... So um, obviously the last sentence... I heard right. the voice from the angel cry, Fear God, give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. So I would put it in 1798. Okay, so we'd, we'd start sentence, first sentence in 1798. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, or you mean like the, I saw a number of companies that seem bound together by cords. Uh, yeah, is, is the whole paragraph. I would can, put them all at that point because it's just talking about that moment, here's the situation, and then the first angel's message comes to that group, to those people at that, in that time period. Sister Lisa? Um, so for this kind of the end, but just, so they're all in darkness. Yeah, yeah, yeah put the darkness in. Yeah, because you have the darkness going, going through. From the time of the end, still there's darkness. Yeah, so she talks about it that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is he objecting to that? <laughs> okay, so I'll tell you what it's he's objecting to. Tell us he, what he's saying saying the first three sentences mm -hmm. begin here at the time of the end. And in, in our prayer meetings, we said that the first two sentence was an experience pre-time of the end, that these people are in darkness, there are some people who have light, and then the first angel's message comes. What would be the, why would that be a major point? Oh, I, I'm not saying it's a major point, I just <laughs> like everyone to be on the same page. <coughs> I, I really, <coughs> if we can get 20 people of their own volition without being roped into it, 
to agree, it seems to me that um, we can have confidence that we're coming to the right conclusion. So it's, it's not, I'm not saying it's a major deal, but I just wanted to, wanted to tidy that loose end up. So the beams of light from Jesus, like the rays from the sun, were imparted to them. I think we could mark that as an increase of knowledge. And it's clear that they had their countenances lighted and looking up to Jesus before these beams came. So we can say it's before. So you haven't been to a prayer meeting, have you? Oh, I have yeah, been, I think, once. Oh, okay. You have. Um, so that's the logic. I don't remember how we did it before. Okay, so that's the logic that I used. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. um, that we'd split this paragraph into two pe two, into half, yeah. three sentences, two sentences, beams of light from Jesus, um, and if you remember, we did light, and then what? Voice, do you remember that? Yeah. There's a light and a voice, and the reason that that becomes important is because later on, you see a voice and a light. <coughs> Just to help us, to, to guide us that, we, that we're on the right channel. So, we're, so we marked uh, beams of light. This light is this message. There's a connection between the light and the voice. Um, then the first angel's message comes down. So the first angel comes down. So it's those first three sentences before I placed them pre-1798. So I just want to make sure that everybody still agrees with that, they can see it. Um, and the reason, the reason that people might struggle on that is because there are people who have light. And the reason why, uh, I guess Brother Theodore was saying, is it that big a deal? And the reason that I'm, I, I introduced it as, I guess, a big deal is because if you're in this company, and you're bound together, and most of you are in darkness, and one of you is in light, it's only the person in the light here that's going to receive uh, this light that gets shed from heaven. So it, 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 it means that if you're uh, in darkness here, you don't even have an opportunity to receive the first angel's message. That's the point that I, w I, I read in here. But if this all begins here, then it's not quite the same. Brother Theodore. Well, there has to be people <coughs> with light during the period of darkness. I mean, we know that there is and there's people looking for light. So you couldn't say that all of a sudden, at the time of the end, it's the first time that anybody's looking for light, or that they have light. Um, but I still think that the time in which it's talking about is at the moment of the time of the end, there has to be people in that condition before the first angel's message is given. So it can't be after the first angel's message is given, however you look at it. It has to be a precondition before the message is given. And then the implications of that yeah. is only <coughs> this person here is going to receive the first right. angel. Yeah. And, and that's what kind of trips people up or they find it difficult to accept. Why do you um, I, I'm assuming people go to Miller and to say, you know, Miller was 16 here. A deist, didn't believe it, he may have been even, I don't know if he was an atheist, but at least a deist here by the time he gets to this history. And you know, what possible light could this man have? Because he seems to get his light later on. That's the argument that people use. But you have other stories um, which we'll, we'll, we'll talk about. You know, there are other examples that people are searching pre time of the end. But even a person who's a deist, if you look at Miller's early life, he is still searching for truth. That's one of the reasons why he ends up with his belief system. Part of that is his journey. He doesn't have light yet. That, 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 that's my argument. This, this yeah. man is a righteous man back right. here. Right. That's, it's, it's, about, boy. it's boy. about what that person is going to be, not about what his belief system is at that moment.
because that's what this illustration is all about. That person goes all the way to the end. It's not, there's no darkness, you know, receiving light. It's the people who have the light who receive the light. And it, that's the way I read this. Um, is that great? He answered a portion of my question, but another portion of my question was so. What was, it, what was your question? Oh, that if people who that they're ha they're in light during the time of darkness, those that um, you portray that way, if those are people who are like, are they living up to the light that they have? You know, even though it's a time of darkness, they're living up to the light that they have sincerely. And he basically answered that. So let's think of some people. Some stories. Uh, if you can, can you remember your second question? Yeah. Okay. So hold on to your second question. Yes. Sorry. Paul. You mean Paul? Paul. Yeah. You, you know he was. He was in that. He was a good kid. I think he was speaking the truth. He was always in by I'm guessing, I don't know exactly, but he may not even been born then. Oh. He may not have been born that early. If he was, he was a very young babe. He may have been a little bit older or a little bit younger than Jesus. Sister Tamina. Uh, the Magi, the... The Magi. Shepherds. So, if we just go with the Magi, Uh, someone else? Shepherds. Someone else. Simeon and Anna. So someone else? <laughs> someone else? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought you somebody out there. <laughs> no, not someone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. The first four ways. Okay. Okay, so I guess we'll, that that will be enough. We've got Zachariah and Elizabeth. If you're going to do it, Zachariah and Elizabeth, I guess we'd put Joseph and Mary. So um, there's quite a lot of people before the time of the end. Um, actually, maybe you've got some other names. Noah. I'm going to run out of space there. There's lots of people. Daniel. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. I've put those three. I'm not sure if they're around. That late, then, then I, I don't know, but I'll, 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 I'll put them in parentheses because we, we don't know anything about them. So, so what about Zerubbabel? Uh, yep. And, Josh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. Joshua. And there's a whole bunch of other lesser characters, but. Joshua, for what reform, like, for the Moses? No, no. This mm -hmm. is this Joshua is all the, the uh, captivity. Yeah. So I'm just going to put captivity here because there's lots yeah. of people. Um, Moses's mother, Jochebed. Uh, okay, so. There's just so many people that the more you think about it, um, so I think as Sister Alyssa said, it, you sort of opened the whole Bible up. So I think it's a well-established truth that there are these searches for truth, searches for light here. Um, and if you just take Moses' mother as an example, her parents, they don't talk about the mother ma mainly, she's the one that's going to receive this light, you know, primarily. You could even put uh, Pharaoh's daughter there, I guess. I don't know if you'd be happy to do that. Pharaoh's daughter would be here, someone a seeker for truth, and then, sorry. The elders of Israel 
the elders of Israel. It's yeah. just, it just goes on and on in each story. There's lots of people in each story. So it could be, it might not even be, if we're happy with the Magi, then it opens up, let's say, Pharaoh's daughter, even her father, um, Moses, his, I guess you'd call him his, Moses' his grandfather, not technically, but um, he's opened the, the, uh, the palace to this stranger. And you get, I think you get the idea that he, he actually knows he's a Jew. I don't think it's that hard to, that, uh, mm -hmm. I don't think you can keep it a secret. <laughs> Just the facial features, they, they know he's a Semite. Um, but he lets so many things sort of ride because Moses is going to become the favourite of the court. So there are lots of people. So hopefully that's okay, my brother. Just wait to him. Um, okay, so let's whiz, whiz through this if we're okay with that. Uh, the arrival of the first angel. Then paragraph two, the empowerment of the first angel. Someone read that paragraph. Paragraph two. A glorious light then rested down upon these companies to enlighten all who would receive it. Oh wait, yeah. Some of those who were in darkness received the light and rejoiced. Others resisted the light from heaven, saying that it was sent to lead them astray. The light passed away from them, and they were left in darkness. Those who had received the light from Jesus joyfully cherished the increase of precious light which was shed upon them. Their faces beamed with holy joy <coughs> while their gaze was directed upward to Jesus with intense interest, and their voices were heard in harmony with the voice of the angel. Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. As they raised this cry, I saw those who were in darkness thrusting them with side and with shoulder. Then many who cherished the sacred light broke the cords which confined them and stood out separate, separated from those companies. We'll stop there. Yeah. Um, just want to back up um, two sentences. If you picked up the sentence, as they raised the cry. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, if um, let me go one back. When it says, Fear God, give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. From that point to the beginning of the paragraph, a glorious light rested down upon these companies and then it go, takes you to the first angel's message again. Just those uh, few sentences. What things have we learnt from that that may be new to us, uh, a different <coughs> way of thinking about things? What key points did we pick up? In darkness, receive the light. Okay, so that's an important point that we picked up. Here, only those in the light receive the first angel's message. But here, the dynamic is different. Everyone has now got access to this light. I'll leave it like that. Oh, so I'm going to put all. So that's an important point that we picked up. Everybody has an opportunity now. What else did we pick up? <clears throat> oh, sorry. If if they if they rejected the light that was sent to them, then they went right back into darkness. Okay. So if, if they reject the light. They, um, they're left in darkness, yeah. so they, they, they never got out of the darkness. They've, right. been, they've been in this darkness all the way through. They remain in darkness if they don't accept the light, but they have an opportunity now. Right. Uh, one more point. Their voices were heard in harmony with the angel. Okay, so this angel that comes here has remained all the way through, and now it's the angel and the people. So we, we picked that, that we picked up that point. 
The angel runs all the way through this history. Now the people join the angel. And we had, we said an increase of knowledge. And uh, this is the period of the increase of knowledge. So maybe I'll do it this way. So um, after the first angel's message, then there's two sentences, those two sentences, as they raise this cry, um, those who are in darkness, they push them. And then what happens? Separation. The cords are broken. Who breaks the cords? They break the cords themselves. So this is an important aspect to consider. They break the cords. But they only break the cords after there's, um, what, do, what, what do we want to call it, this fight between them? Persecution. Persecution. So, there's persecution and the cords are broken. All of this is happening uh, uh, with, with called 1E, or Empowerment of the Message, First, me first Angel's Message. Uh, then there's another section, same paragraph. As they were doing this, men belonging to the different companies and revered by them passed through, some with pleasing words, others with wrathful looks and threatening gestures, and fastened the cords which were weakening. These men were constantly saying, God is with us, we stand in the light, we have the truth. I inquired who these men were, and was told that they were the ministers and the leading men who rejected the light and were unwilling that others should receive it. So this gives us the idea that the companies are churches. So what do we call this? The work of the enemies? So we've got the work of the enemies there. Anything else that is of significance. What is the work of the enemies? Trying to keep them in darkness. Well, they fasten the cords that are weakening. So the work is. Um, to keep all those people who wanted to leave when this light shining upon them to retain them in their in those companies so that they, that they couldn't escape. <coughs> yeah. Work it, of the enemies. It Sorry? also tells uh, lies, right? Because they say we stand in line, we have the truth. Yet though they had rejected the light, so the work of it of the enemies is also deception. I'm going to put rejection. You want to put deception. <laughs> but they're deceiving. Who had their hands up? Um, <coughs> didn't notice it before, but in this reading here it says, um, um, as they were doing this, men belonged to different companies and revered by them passed through. And when I look at the word passed through, it to me, um, and plus I'm reading more into it, 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 it it suggests that they were passing judgment on them. They're actually judging these other people. What does it mean literally? To pass through? Yeah. Because I'm sure you can make that application, but I don't think that's what it what it means in the in the, in the literal reading of it. Passed through. Brother Greg, what do you think that means? When they pass <coughs> through? Uh, I just thought it meant going around them. Um, so there's different companies and they're passing through and just tightening the I, I think if, 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 this was, if this was a company, um, then Brother Graham would wander around all of you and say, come on folks, uh, don't listen to these wicked people who are leaving us. 
We need to uh, remain firm and true to okay. the foundations of our faith. We need to. So he's kind of like going around <coughs> consolidating everyone, keeping them happy, keeping them in place. So he's passing through the midst of you. Sister Rachel? Could it also be going from one company to another, not just within one? Like, I think of uh, Paul, the Jews were always following him from city to city, trying to interactive work, I don't know if that's the same. It could be. I, I think it would depend upon the context that we're thinking of <coughs> here. Because if, if we're thinking about Millerite history, um, I'm not sure what influence the Baptists have with the Methodists. Mm. Um, and what, you know, I don't, I don't know if a Baptist minister would actually have any influence with a Presbyterian congregation. I thought mm. within the same denomination, kind of like going from one church to another. Yes, yes. If, if, we, if, we, if yeah. we think in a company, could be 20 churches, mm -hmm. he'd be passing from one church to another for sure, yes. Yeah. Sorry, I misunderstood what you meant. Yes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's not just one local church mm -hmm. in Little Rock, this company. It's a whole denomination, potentially, which could have many, many churches. Brother So as they're trying to, these cords are broken, and they're tightening these cords. Um, we're starting to strengthen these cords that are weakening. Um, so this would indicate to me that, I mean, they're not keeping in the people who have left because they actually want them to go. So they're not wanting them around. But, but that means when those people leave, it also has an influence upon the others. So they have to come in and then try to, uh, you know, keep the other people in that group in, in the company. So, I mean, you see that same type of work now. There's even while some people are being kicked out, they are tightening the cords around the others that are left. They don't want them to be influenced and also leave. Mm -hmm. Sister Shaqueta, um, what are these cords? Mm -hmm. With the different messages? Mm -hmm. So, um, Cord equals message. Is, is that what you say? Mm. Yeah, uh, brother George. Mm. I think it's a bond or an association. Mm. Um, <coughs> you mean a uh, part of a group? Is that what you mean when you say an association? Membership? Yeah. Is that what you mean? Shall I, can I say, change that to membership? Is that how you see that? That works. Yeah? yeah. About baptismal vows. Sorry? Or about baptismal vows. I was seeing a chord in that when he said membership, then I was seeing like, um, or he said commitment, then I saw like covenant relationship, marriage, with a mar within a marriage you have the baptismal vows within the church. Um, Brother Larry, what, is, what are these chords? What is, the, what is a chord? Yeah, a chord is uh, something that's going to hold things together, so I'm saying that it could be a type of uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay, is membership mm -hmm. a good substitute for relationship? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you membership. Um, Brother Bob? Um, I'm, I'm thinking that it means, it means um, that there, there are common doctrines which could be false doctrine because they're in darkness. So I'm saying it's fault those cords. Is they're binding them is a, is a, a message which is, a, a, which is, a, which is a, not a good message. Is message doctrine? There's um, good and bad. Yeah, but is that is that a definition? Is is are you saying a doctrine is message or is it a separate thing? It, since they're being bound by these cords and they're in darkness, I would think that it, the the cord itself is the false doctrine. That's what they're bound by. They're being bound by them, and as they're weakening, because some people are 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 not obeying those, they're they're not following that message anymore, and they're leaving. But the ones that are still there, how can they retighten the cords unless they're reaffirming their their 
their doctrinal position. Okay, so I'm, I'm about to that. I'm just checking his message doctrine. Or the, is that two separate things? I think it's two separate things because okay. their doctrines are stuff that they've been hanging on to for a while. A message seems to be something that, that's new. Oh, but you could have an old message. Well, I guess so. I, I don't want to force it into something that it just, it, to me, it sounds similar. A doctrine and a message. Well, let, it, let it be message slash doctrine, whatever. That that's fine. I preferred the word doctrine. That's why I wanted to make. That's why I wanted to make them the same. Yeah. Sister Tamina. Um, could it be that it's also faith? I'm not sure what that means. Like when we have the vision of Ellen White with the Green Court, she says this is faith, and the same faith uh, clusters people together, right? What is a faith? What, what faith clusters people together? I guess the same message. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> when you say the faith brings them together, you can see your face. Uh, Brother Philip. Uh, I would let the passage this define this. <coughs> and I would say <coughs> is uh, pleasing words, wrathful looks, and threatening gestures. It's That's the code. Yeah, like pleasing words. <coughs> Maybe you could make a parallel and say a peace and safety message, but yeah. So if I say, Brother Philip, you're really nice, <laughs> that's the code. Uh, yeah, I think they they use this kind of, I don't, I don't know the word in English, they, you know. Manipulation? Flattery? Yeah, they, they try to flatter, Coercion. you know, the people, with all kinds of words. They try if they they try to win them emotionally, if because they cannot win, it's harder to win them intellectually. The easiest way is to win them emotionally with pleasing words. Okay, so you don't think? <coughs> no, uh, I don't say I don't agree. Yeah, with her oh, message. yeah. So we're in we're in. Um, my format is a little bit different to yours, and they fasten the cords which are weakening. Are you okay with that? Uh, that bit last part of the first sentence. Fasten the, and then it says, these men were constantly saying, <coughs> we have the light, we have the truth. Yes. So the cords are not the light and the truth. No, it's I, the did, way I did not say they are not the light and the truth. I, I would add to this what has been said, that also it's a pleasing word, rather than looks and threatening gestures. I don't, I don't, I agree it that there is a, a message. Are, are the pleasing words and the wrathful looks Maybe the tightening of the cord yeah. as opposed to the cord itself? Yeah, I thought about that. Maybe it's just the tightening. So maybe they use these pleasing <coughs> words to tighten the cord of Pharisee. To yeah. tighten the cord? A Pharisee. Pharisee. Heresy. Oh, heresy. heresy. To tighten the cord of heresy. Let's keep it doctrine because because it's so it's neutral. I don't want to make them look like okay. bad. Okay. The, the doctrine. So yeah, that, yeah. So then, these words <coughs> are the instrument that they use to promote these doctrines. Okay. And and so membership. Let's do the membership one. Okay. What's that? I don't know. I didn't say that. The doctrine's fine, you know, look, you know, our doctrines are good, you know, they've, they've been established over a thousand years, we, we know they're right, these new people, don't trust them, that's the doctrine. What about the membership? They try to force people, because there's this, probably there's this psychological or maybe barrier, like, you don't want to leave us, right? Like, Why don't you want to leave? Are, you don't want to be kicked out of... Where's the safety? I remember in Jesus' days, they were uh, they're threatening people, getting them, uh, excluding them from the synagogue. So this is, this might be the membership. They, this is the threatening gesture. So there's safety if you remain in the ark. Yes. You don't want to leave the boat because you'll be in trouble. Mm -hmm. So that's that membership. So both of them could be these calls: <coughs> the membership and the doctrine. Any other points on this? So. We have the courts being doctrine and membership, and the way how they hold people together is by the emotions. By the emotions, which is, which is what? Pleasing words, wrathful looks. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, okay, next paragraph, two for one, paragraph one. 
Um, so we're not going to read all of this. Uh, I, I'll read it, it, it's fairly short. I saw those who cherished the light look upwards with ardent desire, expecting Jesus to come and take them to himself. Um, Brother George, what does ardent mean? The word ardent. Strong. Strong. Sister Kathy, ardent. Um. Are you there yet, Sister Alyssa? Okay. Hopeful. Hopeful. You said strong? Strong, hopeful desire. Are you there yet? Yes. Okay, ardent. If it's, if it's strong, don't read it out, paraphrase, because it's complicated. <coughs> fierce. Fierce. So, fierce is strong. So, with strong desire. Anything else? Desire is so hot, burning. Okay, hot, burning, mm. ardent. Um, they expect... Passionate. We'll go with that, passionate. With passionate desire, they expect Jesus to come and take them to himself. Soon a cloud passed over them and their faces were sorrowful. Um, I inquired the cause of this cloud and was shown that it was their disappointment. The time when they expected their saviour had passed and Jesus had not come. Discouraged settled upon these people. So where are we now? So we're at the first disappointment. So we're at April 19th, 1844, and there's a cloud. And what's this cloud doing? Disappoints them. It disappoints them. Because it says in their faces were sorrowful. First they were happy, then the cloud comes, and then they're sorrowful. Mm -hmm. So I, I asked, um, what did it, say that again what you just said? I asked you, what, what, what does this cloud do? Yeah, it makes them sorrowful. Is that it? what it says? Sister Andrea, is that what it says? No, it says it passed over them. I think it's the other way around. Explain a little bit more. Well, it came over them and they were sorrowful because of the disappointment. So the sir, oh, Brother Larry. I would say that I'm looking up, cherishing the light. All of a sudden, the cloud comes over, blocks it. That's how I'm reading it. Looking upward, expecting for Jesus to come. And then it says, soon a cloud passed over them, and their faces were sorrowful. Doesn't it say in the next sentence yeah. that it was the, the disappointment? The disappointment. Sister Andrea? No. You sounded like you were disagreeing. This one. I didn't read the rest. Okay, so I'll read the two cloud ones then. Soon a cloud passed over them and their faces were sorrowful. I inquired the cause of this cloud and was shown that it was their disappointment. So what does that mean? I think that the cloud is the disappointment. The basically. cloud is the disappointment. Yeah. Uh, Sister Lisa? The cloud is caused by the disappointment. The it's cloud is caused by the disappointment. Right. It's like, um, I'm going to use a crude analogy, but I remember watching cartoons as a, as a kid, especially Charlie Brown, where this one character would constantly be in a bad mood, and there would be a cloud with rain coming down, and it would be a, a direct relationship with the mood that the character was in. It wasn't the cloud causing the mood, it was the mood causing the cloud. Bob? Um, I don't know if this figure is in, but a cloud, it literally, you know, it, it filters or blocks light, mm -hmm. and, and they, didn't ha they didn't have, the, they didn't understand the message correctly. So there was some darkness there, but it wasn't complete darkness. But the, the cloud, I think, represents represents their 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 lack of complete understanding of the truth, because it could have been received. Mm -hmm. um, Philip. Yeah, I guess you could see this, uh, as you said, that the cloud is blocking the sun, the light. But I can read it in a bit different way. 
He says, Sun, the sun of cloud passed over them, and it says, when it passes over them, it doesn't mean it stays over them. It just passes over them as if, if it would lead them in some direction. Mm -hmm. And this turned my mind to the pillar of cloud in the, to the children of Israel, as they were led by the cloud. <coughs> and uh, Ellen Rice says, the cause of the cloud was this disappointment. So I could see that that cloud could lead them into the midnight cry. But they would have to follow it. And it, co it comes because of the disappointment. You're saying this cloud is positive? I could see it. It's going to lead them somewhere. And uh, one more, one more uh, uh, <coughs> argument I could bring to this is that the cloud also brings the rain. So even though it, and rain is also a symbol of a light. So I, I could see both ways, I'm not sure. Sister Kathy, you've got to deal with that. Go <coughs> I cast that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so bad. She's <laughs> not even going to give you the time of day. We're running out of time. We're running out, okay, <laughs> we're running out of time. Um, I, I see that the first sentence is, is describing their strong, passionate desire, expecting to see Jesus in a cloud coming. He didn't come, and now there's this analogy of a cloud, which is representing the disappointment. So they were very... It, you know, ardent and passionate, but now he didn't come, and now there's the opposite of the cloud. Instead of the cloud of Jesus, it's a cloud of disappointment. So, are, are we are we okay that first you get the disappointment, and the disappointment causes the cloud, what? not the cloud causing the disappointment, what? or not? An inquiry, the cause of this cloud, and it was shown that it was their disappointment. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I said, but uh, maybe yeah, it may be. It has to be together, isn't it? Okay. You have to have so the, the cause is the disappointment, the cloud is the effect. The cause is not the effect. Are you okay with that? The disappointment caused the cloud. Say it again. The cause is the disappointment, and the cloud is the effect. Mm -hmm. Right, the result. So you have the cause and the effect. The cause yeah, but this cloud is a symbol. Yeah, yes, yes. So is the disappointment? Yes. Just want to make sure that the cloud is not something positive. It's not something that God sent. It's, it's not moving along with them. It's a symbol of their mistake, of their disappointment. Um, and there's lots of people happy. The leaders are happy about all of this. Yep, the ministers and leading men who I had before noticed rejoiced and all those who rejected the light triumphed greatly while Satan and his even angels also exalted. Everyone's happy. Sister Andrea, sorry. Doesn't the following um, sentence tell you what the cloud is when it says, as discouraged settled upon the waiting ones? Isn't that a repeat in the lar enlarge of what the cloud is that is passing over them? It's just the discouraging that is settling upon them at caused by the disappointment. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so Passover settles upon them. Yeah? Are you okay with that, Brother Philip? If it settles, it's yes, sir. not moving. Okay, so uh, cloud equals what? And, uh, and disappointment. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the um, second angel comes. Oh, by the way, uh, I didn't say this and I wanted to. If we're, if we're okay with this, and I don't think it's a stretch, we, we could tease this out if we spent time doing this. 240 paragraph 2, which we've called the empowerment of the first angel. Um, this demonstrates our or confirms our understanding of Revelation 14, Revelation 10, I would argue. Revelation 10, we, where we place at 1E, lots of people are joining in. It becomes a large body of people who are now doing this work. And it says it's the first angel. 
So if you overlaid Revelation 14, Revelation 10 on, on this, you can show really in a simple fashion that Revelation 10 is the first angel's message without much effort, if you're willing to just put that straight on top and look and just go last part of that paragraph and their voices were heard in harmony with the voice of the angel. There's this large group of people who now are going to be joining in. So I think that's an important part to see. Um, we've done the disappointment. Two for one paragraph two, the arrival of the second angel. Then I heard the voice of another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. We remember it picks up voice. And in a moment, it's going to talk about light. So for me, it's bookending or having a chiasm for the first and the second angel. The, both, of the, both the arrivals of the first and second angel. I think this is a proof, um, I think a relatively good proof, to show that the arrival of the second angel is at the disappointment. It's at that way mark. Just using that. Um, heard the voice, a light shone around those desponding ones, and with ardent desire for his appearing, they again fixed their eyes upon Jesus. There's this burning desire of coming back. Um, I saw a number of angels conversing with the one who had cried, Babylon is fallen. These united with him in the cry, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. So the lights, sorry, the cloud's gone. There's no more cloud here. And um, we're still only at the disappointment or the arrival of the second angel. So we're still only here. And now the cloud's gone because it was a symbol of their disappointment. And then it says, angels come down. And what did they... Oh, so this one says, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. And these ones say what? Behold, the bridegroom cometh. So, these two angels, uh, or groups of angels, they do what? It says, um, and they unite with him in the cry, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. The musical voices of these angels seem to go everywhere. Uh, exceeding bright light and uh, exceeding bright and glorious light shone around those who had cherished the light which had been imparted to them. What light is this that's been imparted to them? This is the people. Where do we see this light that was imparted to them? First angel, midnight cry. Second angel. So we've got three different answers. Midnight cry. Sister Kathy. Midnight cry. Midnight cry. Brother Theodore. <coughs> well, I would say it's the midnight cry. I don't know why it wouldn't be. Where's the, f where's the last place we saw light? Revelation 10. Uh, go back to the beginning of the paragraph, 241 paragraph 2. Then I heard the voice, Babylon is fallen, a light shone upon those desponding ones. So the last place we saw light was here, the second angel. Which is before the, uh, the midnight cry. An exceeding bright and glorious light shone around those who had cherished the light which had been imparted to them. So uh, maybe my question wasn't, was misleading. It brings light in two different places. It says that an exceeding bright and glorious light shone around those who had cherished the light which had been imparted to them. So there's Light, maybe I'm, maybe I'm going to call it um, light one, and then there's a, a glorious light. Now I'll just call it light, and then there's glorious light. 
Can we see these two lights? And this glorious light is only imparted to those who receive the light here. The light is the voice and there's a secondary light here. If we're okay with that. So I'm suggesting that that light it's speaking about that had been imparted to them is the light of the second angel. You're only going to receive this message, Behold the Bridegroom Cometh, if you accept the second angel's message. What implications does that, does that have, us, have for us today, Brother George? I'm going to put 2E here. So it's language that we're familiar with. It says you can only get that if you accepted that. What implications does that have for us? Shall I step back and make a, 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 a build up of questions before we do that? Yeah? Okay, give me these two way marks in our line for priests. Okay, April 19 is 9 11. So this is 9 11. And this? That's. I'm going to say that that's midnight. Or 2014. Okay, so Sister Andre, you were looking? I'm sorry. You happy with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we say 2014, 2018 to give us coverage, uh, and we'll call this the summer, she doesn't say it in this passage, so I've added that bit in. Now tell me the implications. I'll read it to us while you're thinking about it. An exceeding bright light shone around those who had cherished the light which had been imparted to them. Well, you won't... You won't receive the light of the <coughs> second's empowerment. You called that midnight cry, didn't you? Is that what you said? I said midnight. Okay. So you won't cherish, or you won't re even receive that light if you hadn't cherished 9-11. So that sounds really sort of, you know, what's the big deal when Brother George said, said that, but how many people who have left our movement have trashed 9-11 and have, have moved the second angel, have called it some kind of type, and, you know, however they want to get out of it, that it, there is, in some shape or form, they denigrate that way mark. And it's pretty clear, if you want to be partaker of 2014-2018 history, uh, this work, this great light, you need to have accepted 9-11 uh, and, and held on that this was the arrival of the second angel. If you move the second angel from 9-11, you forfeit your right to be part of this great work. So it's, it's a really important implication, uh, which I think is a really not, I mean, it's just tucked in one sentence here and you'd, you'd easily miss it if you didn't think about it. So I think that's really important for us to see. So we're going to make a break unless someone wants to make a comment just on this bit here. I think I do with the cloud or do you is that too late? No, um, so with darkness running throughout the history, it seemed, it, the thought occurred to me that um, when their ardent um, desire for Christ wanes with their disappointment, that that allows more darkness in a little bit. So that creates a, a cloud. And then their desire reappears and that like the light penetrates and it pushes out um, darkness. I like that. Um, does anybody have any prayer requests? <coughs>